Today I'm going to be showing you an incredibly special build because not only are we going to be doing thousands of damage with it, but we're also going to be healing ourselves at the same time. So if you're an Ash of War spam merchant like myself, then this build is going to be an absolute godsend. And of course, a build I'm talking about revolves around the Blood Tax Ash of War and more importantly, the Great Katana from the DLC because yeah, it wrecks. So of course, sit back and relax and let me show you how you can create the ultimate Great Katana build. Now just quickly before we jump into showing you how to get the items and obviously the build itself, I'm more than aware of you guys asking where the DLC boss fights are, because for those of you that don't know, in these videos I tend to not show the DLC so I don't spoil it for anybody, but that unfortunately asks the question as to whether or not these builds are actually good for the DLC, so for those of you that are wondering that, I will indeed show gameplay of me destroying the final boss as well as Mesmer with this build to show you just how good it actually is and I'll probably do that going forward for future videos. Videos. But whilst I'm showing you all the stats and talking about the build itself, I will just be showing footage from the base game so there's no spoilers for everybody else. And I'll also have those fights timestamps. So if you want to check those fights out and see if this build is worth it or not, obviously feel free to head over there now. And of course, I'll give you prompt warning for when the gameplay actually starts for those of you that don't want to be spoiled. And one last thing, all of the gameplay both from the base game and the DLC is from New Game Plus 4. But firstly, you do need to gain access to the DLC because the main weapon that we do want to use for this build is going to be the brand new Great Katana and this weapon can be found on a body residing in this particular lake just sort of west to the Great Bridge North site of Grace. There is going to be a ghost flame dragon in this lake just be aware but luckily we can just simply walk up to this body that is holding the Great Katana and you won't actually alert the dragon meaning you can also just get yourself back out of there with no problems at all. But the main star of this build is going to be the Ash of War we're going to use which is Blood Tax and in order to get that, you do need to go back to the base game and more specifically get yourself to Mogwin Palace. Now, there are two ways you can do that, either completing Vare's quest to get the unique item that will teleport you here or go through the consecrated snowfields and use the teleporter in that area. If you want to do Vare's quest, you can check out my full questline video, which I will link down below. And for those of you wondering where the teleporter is in the consecrated snowfields, it's literally just sort of like northwest and right next to the yellow annex ruins. Again, in this area but be aware if you do come this way you will be invaded by an NPC and you do have to defeat said NPC to activate that teleporter but whether or not you use that particular method or go through Vari's questline if you make your way to the palace approach ledge road site of grace you can make your way back down the hill past all the albinurics that we usually farm our runes for and the first cave opening on the right hand side as you enter the blood lake will have a silver scarab reside inside and guess what after defeating said silver scarab you will then be granted with the blood tax ash of war so once you've got these two items, obviously make sure you upgrade the Great Katana as much as you possibly can and then apply the Blood Tax Ash of War to it and I highly recommend that you change the variant of the weapon to a quality variant so then you get a good scaling with both strength and also dexterity. I will explain this a bit more when we go into the stats later on but essentially you will get the best stat spread by doing this as you'll have a B rated scaling in both strength and dexterity but the other benefit of doing this is it will allow us to also use things like Blood Flame Blade. The Great Katana itself also deals just a large amount of damage just naturally and also has a passive bleed build up so when you add things on like the Blood Flame Blade that give you an additional fire damage as well as a hemorrhage effect which increases your enemy's bleed build up over time it should be very easy to see how just naturally without any boosting items this can be very very powerful. But of course as you're seeing in the gameplay in the background when you pair this natural ability with something like the blood tax that does four quick attacks you are dealing a tremendous amount of bleed build up as well as a tremendous amount of damage and as I mentioned in the intro this ash of war also heals you each hit of this ash of war does heal you and the final hit of the ash of war actually heals you a little bit more but overall if you connect every single hit with the blood tax you'll be getting back 10% of your health bar along with 120 base HP so roughly 
roughly around about 12 to 15 percent of your health depending of course on your maximum HP of your character. The only sort of caveat if you will with this Ash of War is it does take a little bit of time to get the full flurry of attacks off so you do have to just be wary about the timings especially if you're running this build in the DLC but again you'll see how I do that later on in the video as there will be times where you go to punish your enemies using this Ash of War to then leave yourself vulnerable for a counter attack from them. But of course where we're just getting our health back every time we use this Ash of War and just dealing the silly amounts of damage that we're dealing it kind of isn't too much of a problem to trade and of course the stats you're going to need for this build to deal that silly damage that I'm showing you are going to be the following and as always this build is a level 150 character and as you can see we've got 50 points into vigor 13 mind 19 endurance 40 strength 55 dexterity 9 intelligence 33 faith and then 10 arcane and again just to explain those stats a little bit more my starter class was a samurai but you can be any starter class that you want with this because essentially we do not put any points into intelligence as it's not necessary for this build at all but we do want to have at least 10 arcane in our build because like I mentioned earlier we are using the blood flame blade incantation to infuse our weapon with both hemorrhage and also fire damage but then we've also got 33 faith in the build to allow us to run both Hal Shibiri and also golden vow so we get the plus 25% and plus 15% extra damage boost with both those respective spells and where I mentioned that we change the weapon into a quality version we do of course spread our stats between both strength and dexterity because for those of you that don't know when you actually two hand a weapon in this game you will get an additional 50% of your strength points so when we actually two hand this katana we're going from 40 strength to 60 hitting the first soft cap of that stat but again just to be clear on that that won't help you with the ash of war and will purely only help with your damage output with your light and heavy attacks but still it is useful because we will have to rely on those attacks from time to time so it's still handy to get the best AR possible out of the main weapon but I know you guys also like to delve a little bit higher in terms of your levels so if you are looking for around about a level 200 guide for this character here are the stats for that that I recommend that you improve and realistically other than giving yourself a little bit extra vigor we're basically pumping everything we can into both strength and dexterity because realistically we're just trying to get the best damage output that we can with this weapon because we're blood tax will be healing us every time we use it like I say we can just basically do a big trade battle between us and the enemy and if we deal more damage than them then of course we're gonna come out better off but again whether you're using a level 150 character or a level 200 character here are going to be the talismans that I recommend that you run and as I mentioned where we're spamming the absolute hell out of the ash of war if we can the first talisman I recommend that you run is going to be the shard of Alexander as we get a plus 15% boost whenever we damage our enemies with the Ash of War but then I also recommend running both Rotten Winged Insignia and also Millicent's Prosthesis as not only will both of them be giving you a boost to successive damage output which does trigger with the Ash of War you will also be getting a plus 5 dexterity from Millicent's Prosthesis which with the level 150 build will push you up to 60 and with the level 200 build will push you up to 80 obviously hitting those respective soft caps but of course that does require you going into New Game Plus to get both of these so for whatever one that you don't have I do highly recommend that you run something like the axe talisman to help with your charged attacks with this great katana because again we can actually stun our enemies quite easily if we do rely on our heavy attacks with this weapon but of course where I mentioned that we're trading a bunch of hits potentially you can also run something like the dragon crest great shield to help with your damage negation but either way the last talisman in this build that I recommend that you run is going to be the lord of blood's exaltation because we are going to be procking bleed almost every other use of the ash of war or just genuinely very quickly if you want to use the base movesets of the weapon as well as long as we're using blood flame blade so we are basically going to consistently have a plus 20 percent buff to our overall damage output as that will of course happen whenever a bleed proc occurs and then finally to round this build off in the wonder physic i highly recommend that you run both the thorny crack tier as well as the stone barb crack tier because as i mentioned the blood tax ash of war does indeed trigger successive attack buffs so we'll be getting a third boost with the thorny crack tier but to also help us out with our stance breaking ability because the blood tax actually doesn't really do too much stance damage I do recommend that you run the stone barb crack tier because again with some boss fights that maybe don't always give you a window to use the full blood tax ash of war you can then rely on the charged heavies to then break your opponent's stance to then hit them with a blood tax and then hit them with the repost straight after and then with the armor I highly recommend that you run the white mask because although it isn't the most fashionable 
whole thing to where, again, you'll get a plus 10% boost to your damage output whenever a bleed proc occurs. And I would personally say to pair that with the Rakshasa armor set, as you'll get a plus 6% extra damage boost with all of your damage types just by simply wearing the rest of that armor set. So yeah, with all of this combined, that is how we're doing the incredible damage that you're seeing me deal whilst also stealing our enemy's health, giving us a kind of like fun vampire inspired samurai build and it is more than capable of destroying everything that the game has to offer and here is where I'm going to give you a big alert that I'm going to show you the DLC fight. So essentially, for those of you that have been watching so far and don't want to be spoiled, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it and if you did make sure you leave a like rating down below and if you're new around here obviously hit that subscribe button too and that way you'll stay up to date with all of the latest crazy builds we cover here but for those of you that wonder if any of my builds do actually perform well in the DLC this should hopefully give you a good indication that yes yes they do because I am now going to show you the Mesmer fight and also the final boss I won't be commentating over it so that you can just simply watch and see how well this does and just remember I'm trash and for anybody that is struggling using the armor sets and the setup that we have throughout this video for an alternative for the final boss in the DLC feel free to copy this change in the armor so we're basically using the tree sentinel set with the crucible leggings and then we swapped out the rotten winged insignia for the arsenal jar talisman so that we can make sure we're definitely in a medium weight gain and then also swap the lord of blood's exaltation for the dragon crest great shield to again help us not take as much damage from the final boss and then lastly change the wonder physic to the strength dot tier and the upper line hard tier to again just give us the best damage we can with the actual weapon itself and again give us more damage negation so if you're a much better player then you'll obviously kill the boss a lot quicker with the setup i showed in the video but if you want a much more defensive version of this build definitely use the one that i've just shown you on screen and that will help you tremendously with the final boss but as i say that is pretty much everything for this video so thank you all so much for watching enjoy these dlc fights and i guess i'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make bye bye